Good morning, it's April 9th, 2021. I'm Kimberly Jolly from Fat Quarter Shop and we have 11 blocks left in Socialites and I'm so excited. So I'm gonna demo these 11 blocks every Friday. Today's block is called Courage and it's designed by Joanna Figueroa of Fig Tree Quilts. So Lily's gonna show you her quilt blocks and what she did is really fun. She took the inside of the blocks and did different colors. So that shows you how you can do the two squares and the two half square triangles in the center a different color and get a totally different look than what I'm showing you here today. I'm gonna show you the block. I'm gonna start off with showing you some blocks that I made, our sample makers made, and then we're gonna jump right in. Now I demoed in the beginning the six inch blocks. And then I started demoing the nine inch blocks and I'm done with those. So now we're gonna to move to the three inch blocks so that whichever size you're making, because all three sizes are free, it will kind of teach you hopefully something. The three inches are gonna be much harder. So hopefully we'll do good. <laughs> so these are my three blocks that I made using the Homestead Collection by April Rosenthal. And I used a different white on white background 20708-40 and when I get these two quilts together the six and the nine I'm gonna auction them for make a wish and the three inch one I'm gonna make and keep just because we like to have one that we keep for sentimental reasons so these are my blocks and you can really see how much easier this one is than this one but you kind of get a different look and you can even see see how right there it's a little bit that will quilt out but you can tell that I kind of must have stretched my fabric I think the three inch looks really good in this one mm -hmm. and I'm just gonna move those up here and then this is quotation by Zen Sheik and Teresa made this one and you're gonna see that in this block using a very big contrast with a lot of not a lot of busy pieces will help your your block show because there's so many pieces this one is figs and shirtings by fig tree quilts and deborah made that one so those are our three inches this is the folktale collection by layla boutique and terry made this one and these are our six inch versions this is shine on by bonnie and camille and sue made this one and then this one is Cider by Basic Gray, and this is the nine inch that Angel made. So I'm gonna kind of show them to you all together, just so you can kind of see. They look totally different and totally different fabrics. So you can do like, a, this is more of a low volume. You can do lots of different things to get a different look. And you could do what Joanna did, which is the two colors. So I'm gonna show you this one real quick. See how these are the same color. Now Lily's gonna show you, and you can look at Joanna's, and you can see how those four pieces that I just pointed at are different colors. And I love that picture that she has right there, that picture, that picture. So cute. Of water, or. So if you wanna make this with me, go to fatquartershop.com and block 26, completely free. I've already put my yellow sticky over the six inch and nine inch because already this morning I made a mistake trying to figure out what half square triangles you're gonna make. <laughs> um, Lily can vouch for me on that. Yes, it was a good time. Yeah. So we're gonna do um, this one just a little bit different than we've done the others. Now I pulled it out of my binder already and This time for the three inch, I decided to use the Figs and Shirtings Layer Cake by Joanna. And she's the designer of the block, so that's great. And I'm using 9900-200, which is a Bella solid. And I really think when you use a three inch block, the lighter and less busy your background is, is always better. So I decided to just go with the Bella solid. And I'm gonna use this one because it doesn't have a lot going on with it. So that's what I'm gonna be using for the remaining three inch blocks that I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna look at my pattern. And for my C and Bs, anytime I do a cat's cradle type block, which would be something like this, I cut these two fabrics bigger. 
and I'm gonna show you how to trim down. Now, I will tell you it took me about two years to perfect this. I used to make it bigger, and then when I would trim down, I would trim like the wrong side or trim off a point and have to redo it. So it was something that really took me a long time to kind of master. For the triangles, half square triangles, I'm gonna use triangle paper. So if you're using, if you're making the three inch size, you would get the one inch triangle paper and I'm gonna show you, we're gonna trim it down because we don't make the size that it's called for. That would be 0.75. So I'm gonna use the one inch. If you're making the three inch block, you would use the one and a half inch. And if you're making the nine inch block, you would use the H225, which is two and a quarter inch. So I'll put these aside. And my ease, I'm gonna cut normal. So I kind of review, even if it's a pattern that we've written, any pattern that I'm gonna work with, I always start with reviewing the pattern before I cut so that I can see, you know, what can I use triangle paper for? What can I use flying geese paper for? You know, do I need to cut these bigger? So I'm gonna start with my A and my D because those are triangle paper. And on A and D, it says to cut three squares. So I'm gonna cut three squares off of this roll. And, okay, I want to zoom in a lot right here. So whoever used this triangle paper last didn't cut straight across. Can you zoom in more? Yeah. And you can see that there's um, some white sticking out over here. See all that white? And you can see it dips in here. So I'm gonna ruin these squares because that's gonna make all my stuff uneven. So that's why it's important to cut straight. So I'm gonna cut here, get a straight cut. Because if that's, see how straight that is? That is not straight. That was not cut straight. And if it's not cut straight, you're not gonna have an accurate result. Now, I guess in the end, it really wouldn't have mattered because I'm trimming these down now that I think about it, but that's okay. So I'm gonna just cut here. And I like to use the little washi tape to put this back. And if you wanna know what size it is, you can just write, we're gonna come up with something to mark these so they're easier to see. Ooh. But here I can do H100, which means it's, that's what it is. So I kind of do that at home, mark what size it is. So when you're using triangle paper, we cut three squares. That's gonna give us six of these half square triangles, which is what we need. So I'm gonna put this right sides together. Put this right on one of the edges. And then I trim around this. So that is my A and my D, so I usually make notes. Can I have a um, design board, please? Yeah, what size? Big? Just small, small, tiny. Yeah. Like a needle needle? Yeah, that's good. All right. Thanks. So I just put it on here. That's my A and my D. And if I don't want to use alphabetes, you can just do A, D. I do usually write on them because if I have to walk away when I come back, I will remember what I did because I'm very forgetful. For B, it says to cut two one and five eighth inch squares. Now, if you do that, this is gonna come out exact, you have to be 100% accurate. There's no way I can be that accurate. So I'm gonna cut um, one and seven eighths, which is a quarter inch bigger, or I could just cut two inch squares. Let's just cut two two inch squares. It really doesn't matter, as long as it's bigger, now this right here, these dots are your salvage, and this has a pretty big salvage. Look at that, watch. That's a pretty big salvage compared to normal, but you just need to cut the little squares off. So I just need two two-inch squares 
it's easier to cut two inch squares than one and seven eighths, so that's what I'm gonna do. And then I'll set this aside for next week. And then these, I'm gonna cut on the diagonal. Okay, so these are my B's. Okay, so for my C's, it says cut one, two and three eighths. So I'm gonna cut that two and three quarters just so it's big enough. It's probably too big, but that's okay. That's, it's better to be too big than too small. So I'm gonna cut two and three quarters and then cut that on the diagonal once. And I just go up, whatever it says to do, just go up about a quarter inch, half an inch. Um, in my head on camera while I'm filming, I can't do the math exactly that fast. So these are my C's. And you're gonna see these are much, much too big. But hopefully what I do, especially since it's on camera, hopefully I do it right. And then my last square is my E's and I need four, one and quarter, four, 1.25 inch squares. So what I'll do here, one and a quarter plus one and a quarter is two and a half. So I'm gonna use a two and a half inch square ruler. And so you can see I, this whole layer cake, I can make a whole nother block put this aside for another week. So I'll first cut a two and a half inch square. And then the Creative Grids rulers actually have, in all of these square rulers, they have a white line that makes a cross or a plus sign. And so that is actually at the one and a quarter. So I just use that white line up cut these down so when I cut my layer cake what I did try to do and my background I tried to just cut on corners so that I still have a big piece left so that is my ease and that was pretty quick to cut which is really nice mm -hmm. But this one is a little bit hard to piece. So I'm gonna start with step one, which is making the half square triangles. Now I'm using one inch finished paper, but they need to finish it three quarters of an inch. And I know that because one and a quarter minus half an inch is three quarters of an inch. So I'm gonna take my triangle paper. I have an open toe foot on my machine I'm gonna go to like a 1.5 stitch length and I'm gonna stitch directly on the dotted dashed lines, the dashed lines, I guess. Now you'll notice whenever I'm working with half square triangle paper, I don't pay attention to the arrows on the paper. I just go whichever way. And I do start and stop a little bit off the paper. So since this is such a small block, it's much quicker to sew. But since it's a smaller block, you have to be much more accurate, which is the challenge with doing smaller blocks. Now, I personally love to make smaller blocks because it's challenging and it kind of gives you a run for your money, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's not as easy. So I'm just trimming on these solid lines. 
And we do have a half square triangle cheat sheet that you can download for free at fatquartershop.com, which will help you with unfinished and finished sizes of half square triangles so you know what to buy until you get used to the math. So from here, I'm gonna pull the paper off. Just gonna. If you're pulling your paper and it snags or doesn't wanna pull off, that just means your stitch length. If it's smaller, it'll come off easier. So if it's coming off, you would say it's too long? Yeah, if, if, if okay, so this is perfect, but if it snags, say it snags. Mm -hmm. Your stitch length is too long. Okay and you need to go smaller. And from here, we're gonna iron. Now, when I'm working with small blocks, I will say that this tool is imperative. This new Quilters Clapper by Riley Blake. Do you know where the other ones are? Yeah, I think they're in the blue cart. Oh, sorry, I'm lying. I put fabric on top. You're fine. And these, um, these are in stock. These are coming in stock. These were Riley Blake, the originals. And then this is the Gypsy Quilter new ones. And they're just different. Um, they're just much different. So I'm going to use this one since it's in stock. This is the smaller one. But anytime you're working with small blocks, having a clapper is going to help you get those seams nice and flat because you have so little to work with. And so since you have less fabric to work with, you have less room, less wiggle room to fix your mistakes. So from here, I'm gonna press to one side and then I'll press open. I prefer to press to one side first rather than press open to start because I burn myself if I don't. And then Lily, are there any questions? Yeah, there's been a few that okay. have been coming in. Uh, let's see, first question from Tara Hatfield Porter. I like Kimberly's shirt, where did she get it? And cut to your shirt. Um, look, is it Talbot's? I'm pretty sure it is. I think it's Talbot's. Yes. I think it's Talbot's. It's pretty much where I get most of my clothes. All right, and from Kim West, I am so far behind right now. Will the patterns be on your website for a while or will they come down at some point? They will be free forever. Forever. Okay, from Katie and Sean, I love the Lori Holds thread beeswax Kimberly used in the video earlier this week. Can it be used for EPP or is it only for cross stitching? Yes, it can definitely be used for EPP and it can be used for hand sewing. It can be used for anything because it's 100% natural. So yes, you can use it for that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so she's referring to the video I did on Wednesday on our cross stitch channel, which is called Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube. Mm. Subscribe. All right, and then we had a super chat from Pam Chamberlain for $2.99. Thank you so much, Pam. And she put a pair and it's like fist bumping. Oh, thank you. That's cute. I hadn't seen that pair before. I haven't done a super chat in a long time. I haven't, my people that do my lot do lives that I watch, they really haven't been doing lives lately. Mm. I, they all said they're kind of burnt out. Uh, yeah. And um, so I haven't really, I've been missing my people. <laughs> I'm kind of out of things to watch, too. I watched um, a couple of documentaries this week, but I'm really out of stuff now. I started watching Lady in the Dale. Do you like it? It's interesting. It's yeah. different. It's di I like how they did the animations, like, to kind of A lot of people story. liked that. I hated it. <laughs> but a lot of people liked it, and a lot yeah. of people liked how they put commercials in there. Yeah. No, it was really interesting. Um, I was, like, midway through the second episode where I left off. I don't know how you could... Like, I don't know how Lily watches TV because I have to finish it. I can't not finish something. I have to watch it. I was watching pretty late at night, so I, I just got sleepy. Oh, okay. Yeah. So from here, we're going to make crats. We're going to make cats cradles. <laughs> but you want to make sure we're only making two. Yeah, we're only making two. So we're only going to be using two of these. These others are used later. So I'm going to put those on my design board. And you, this is, oh, sorry. Oh, you're fine. Sorry. Uh, can you explain what a cat's cradle is? Okay. So this is this block right here. This unit right here is called a cat's cradle. I have no idea why it's called a cat's cradle. 
I didn't know until Wednesday that blue bonnets looked like they had a blue bonnet cap <laughs> on their head or a bonnet on their head. Blue bonnet. Yeah, I had no idea, and I'm from Texas. So oh. I don't know why it's called a cat's cradle, but that's kind of just what it's called okay. traditionally. Okay. So from here, we're going to do this little section first. We're going to add these triangles right here, the Bs. And so it's going to kind of look like this. I'm glad we're only doing two of these because <laughs> these are hard. And there are different rulers you can use to make a cat's cradle. Mm -hmm. I've never tried them because what I do works. Like what I came up with years and years ago that took me forever to come up with works. And I'm kind of a creature of habit. Once I have something that works, I just stick with it. So from here, I'm gonna first attach the top. Now, normally, you would just go right sides together and you would line up these ends. Because I have extra fabric, I'm gonna do this, where I line it up offset. And you're gonna see why later. Cause I've cut it bigger, so I have room to trim it. So I'm going to just switch to a quarter inch foot. Sorry guys, I'm right handed, so I can't really do a lot of stuff with my left hand. So I'm gonna sew this and show it to you real quick. Move my stitch link back to a 2.0, or 1.8. So you have more here and more here and you're fine. I'm gonna do that again on this one. And then we're gonna press. Hopefully this works because mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it doesn't always work. So again, set your seam press to one side, then press open. I'm hoping it works. We do have a few theories about why it's called the cat's cradle. Okay, great. A few people had said cat's cradle as in the string game you played as kids, like when you have like a loop of string and you put it okay. through your fingers. No, I, oh, oh, where you do, okay. Yeah. Was yeah. that what that was called? Like one of the shapes you can make is a cat's cradle, I think. Oh my gosh. Or the game is called cat's cradle? Yeah, I have no idea. Uh, somebody, Sandy Taylor suggested Debbie, the inventor of the ruler, named it Cat's Cradle. No, she developed a ruler to mm. make it. It's been called Cat's Cradle for a long time. Okay. But and I heard her rulers are great. I don't use them, but I've heard great things about them. So from here, I'm just going to cut this flush. And then I'm gonna put this here and this here. Mm -hmm. Now, normally, if you're doing it with a normal size, you would put it right sides together right here and it's flush down here. I'm gonna do this because I'm gonna be able to trim mine down later. So I'm just fudging. I made it a lot bigger so that I can trim around. Creative Country Girl TB Tammy Ballock, sorry, Blalock, says it's a cat's cradle because if you look at it with the big upside down triangle on the bottom, it's a cradle with a little cat head. Okay. <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm like turning my head to look at it upside down right now. That's She's like... turning her head sideways. <laughs> I was like, is she dancing over there? Oops, yeah. Cat's cradle party. We do also, we did one video a while back in AGF Stitch where you did demo the Creative Grids Cat's Cradle Ruler. Yes. So from here, okay, from here to here, that is bigger now than a quarter inch, which usually it would be a quarter inch and usually this would be flush and this would be flush. I'm gonna take a ruler that is long enough for this edge. But what I'm gonna line up is right here. So, 
I'm gonna line up that only Ooh. because this is gonna come off later and I'm gonna ignore this. I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna line up here and right here, that quarter inch should hit right there. So make sure that quarter inch hits right at the end, cut there, and then you wanna cut. So you see, I should have made my, I should have made it a little bit bigger. Mm. I probably pulled it too far over. So again, let's see. Yeah, I made these a little too small. So yeah, I put, I probably put that on a little too far over. So let me know if there's questions on that, but the goal is to be a quarter inch away, have a straight line so it's not wavy because you're working on the bias, and this stuff over here is gonna go away later. So maybe whatever size I cut, I would do a little bit bigger than that. From Cindy Adams, when sizing up for trimming, how do you know how much extra fabric will be needed? You just guess. But I mean, this, you're using such a small amount. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking segments of an inch okay. that it should be fine. If you're doing a whole quilt, now that's a whole nother story. But I've never run out of fabric when I do these. And then fabric C, I'm going to make a crease in the center, put that center right where that point is, pull it over, and pin. I'm going to pin on this one because this is kind of the final seam. Do the same thing here, my center. And this is all bias. All top and bottom is bias. I'm hoping this even works. <laughs> it better work. I should have cut them a little bit bigger. Ooh. So the point matches. And I chopped that point off a tiny bit, but I'm going to leave it. It doesn't matter. So same thing, press open, then we're going to trim this down. And I'm not an expert on this, so I know that there's rulers that are out there that work. You should do whatever works for you. Okay, that I did chop off way too much. That's way too much. I'm going to leave it. <laughs> Today I'm going to leave it. Whoa. Yeah, today Goodness. I'm going to leave it. Today's one of those days where I'm going to leave it. Plus it's on the bias. I don't want to, I don't want to redo that. A hey, question from Linda Sherman Hull. Does your starch fabric shrink when you use steam when pressing? No, once you've starched it and it's dried, it will not shrink further. Mm -hmm. And Fun comment from Debbie Kroll, hip hip hooray, I learned something new today. I was able to give my first thumbs up, number 201. Yay, she gave us a thumbs up. Thank you. Yeah. I'm so proud of you, Debbie. That's awesome. That's so awesome. So from here, this needs to be trimmed two by two. It's easier if it needed to be two and a half by two and a half, but it's not, it's two by two. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take a ruler, this is kind of wobbly, so I'm gonna take a ruler that is, no, that's not gonna work. Okay, I'm gonna take this ruler. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna draw lines to make sure I'm even right. Okay, I've got the diagonal on my ruler. And I'm gonna draw a line here. This is where I'm gonna cut. When you're cutting, you wanna make sure that this point is gonna match. Because if you don't, you're chopping off that point. Now, I need to go two inches from that, but I still want that diagonal line. I did something wrong. 
No, I didn't. Hmm. I gotta figure out how to trim this down. Was it too big? I have no idea. Okay, two divided by two. Two divided by two is one. Yeah. So, let me just cut this size and see if I can figure out what to do. This is what happens sometimes. I think it might be too big, but let's see. From here, it should be two inches. So, oh, I forgot to trim my half square triangles down. Okay, Cheyenne Harris just put that in the chat. I just saw that. Oh my word. Oh. That's what happens. Okay, we're gonna start again. So Ooh. I'm gonna make two more half square triangles to fix those. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna trim those down. Oh, okay. I was wondering, I was like, something is not right. So from here, I'm gonna cheat and make this is what I'm going to do when, when you're stressed out. I'm not pulling the paper out. I'm just going to make some half square triangles. And the way I'm going to do it is just do this. Yep, now, now I'm seeing everyone's comments saying you didn't trim down your half square triangles. I was like, what? Okay, this is what happens at home, though. Hmm. And it happens much more often when I'm working on small blocks. Which is why I love my small blocks for the end. <laughs> So I could warm up to them. Okay, let me iron these real quick. Okay, we're gonna, I'm just making these real quick on the side. We're gonna trim all these down and start over. All right. Well, at least I didn't go to step two because if I would have done step two, I would have had to remake all of those. Mm-hmm, mm hmm And at home, it probably would have taken me a little bit longer to figure that out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we need to trim these down to one and a quarter. So these, I don't know, you can keep them or do whatever you want. Put it on the back, I don't know. Yeah. So from here, I need these to be one and a quarter. I was wondering why those fabrics were not, were fitting too snug. I was like, something is not right. So I just trim these off. And the way that I'm doing it is I line up this line and this line. Now, when you do that, you could also trim one side because these are not with these are the ones i just made off camera so these you would have to trim all four sides to get it straight on one side because these i just made randomly jennifer aragon says this is why i'm not doing three inch blocks exactly <laughs> yeah and you know anytime i'm doing something i always do the easiest first and then go down i mean the hardest first and then go to the Sorry, easiest first and then go to the hardest, which is what I'm doing in this series, and you can see why. All right, and we did have a new YouTube member join, Michelle Hunter. Welcome, Michelle. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then another new YouTube member, Olga Kasula. Welcome, Olga. Thank you. And then we had a super chat from Princess P. Holly Martin for $10. And Princess P says, thanks for all you do, Kimberly. You and your entire team are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. We try to be. Hmm. This was a big old fail. Oh, think about this all weekend. It'll drive me crazy that oh. I made this mistake on the video all weekend. Okay. But so you those fixed are fixed. It. Huh? I said, but you fixed it. Well, we're going to see if I fixed it. I need to recut my C and my C and B. So I'm just going to do that off. I'll just do it while I talk. Yeah. Let's see. We did also have another super chat from Mary Bradley for four ninety nine. Thank you so much, Mary. Yes, thank you. Oh, and I did see that we got a bit of sad news this morning in the chat. It looks like the Duke of Edinburgh passed away today. Uh, yeah, Prince he Philip. was 99. He was 99. So our condolences to the UK and the royal family. 
I don't think I've ever met anybody that's lived to 99, so that's pretty good. Yeah, I think the queen is also 99. She's up there. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I watched a, there's a documentary about her and her sister Margaret. Oh, I watched uh -huh. it last weekend. Ooh. It's pretty, it was, um, I think it's an older one. It's on Netflix. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, yeah, it's, it's more about Margaret though. Oh, uh, okay. But just about, yeah, it's about how your sisters, but then one becomes queen. Mm -hmm. You know, they weren't supposed to be queen, so they weren't right. raised that way because somebody abdicated the throne. Right, their father's brother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, and just how they transition from that. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna try this again. I was, I knew something was wrong. I should have thought stopped. Okay, now see, this is right because see how much room you have. Uh, that's why. That's so you should have like have. a ton of room left over. Okay. So we're gonna redo what I did. Oh my goodness. I hope I have it right. Yeah, I have it the right way. Oh, the queen is ninety-four. She will be ninety-five on April twenty-first. What I think is kind of funny is they barely just like recently took away his driving like license. I'm oh, like, okay, yeah. <laughs> could it have gone away at 80? That's funny. So this is much more like it. This is much better. So maybe I should never do the trim down the half square triangles because, or I should should have written a note, like trim down or something so I would have remembered. But that's what I mean about my memory. Like, hello, I just said it. Hmm. So when you cut across here, just cut, and you should have a lot come off. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I mean, you shouldn't be worried about wasting that much. That's that's hardly anything. And from here, I'm gonna try to leave this here. Beverly Browning says, "When you make a mistake, that helps us to see how to recognize our own and how to correct them." Oh, thanks. Now that one, I probably would have, if I was at home, I probably would have walked away for five minutes and then came back and figured it out. Because mm -hmm. if, I, if I had sat there, I would have got frustrated. So. And a few other people in the chat are saying thank you for making the mistake so they can see how to fix it if they make the same mistake themselves. Yeah, and I mean, like, everybody makes mistakes. And, you know, like Lily was saying, you could save this, put it on the back of a quilt. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't throw it away. I just put it in my other stack of blocks that are up here. Mm -hmm. So there's lots you can do with it. I mean, last week when I was making the um, Sherry McConnell block of the month, I made a mistake. And I showed it. I brought it. So from here, it's going to look very different now. Thank goodness. Okay, so I need to be this way. So the reason I turned it is I want this to line up, but I want this quarter inch to line up, but I want to see the dotted line. Some of the sides don't have a dotted line. So I need to pull that back down. And so this is lined up and this dotted line hits the point. And then you should have a lot that comes off. And see how straight it is? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is making a lot more sense. Yeah, yeah now that it's right, I was like, ah. Well, I, I make a lot of mistakes with cat's cradles. It's one of those blocks that I don't prefer to do, actually. So now I'll take my, these should be much bigger so that you, okay, good. So you don't have to even measure the center because it's so much bigger. Mm. And I'm not gonna chop off the points this time. Yay. Uh, see, what if I had fixed, what if I had? Oh, if you had gone and fixed it and then yeah. realized, that would have been sad. So because, okay, what I want you to see is right here, there's a little thing right here. It's hard oh. to see. See uh -huh. that little thing? Uh-huh. Clip it. Oh, less bulk? Yes. 
And then I'm gonna sew with the seam on top so I can hopefully hit the seam. Ooh, perfect. So I'm gonna show you again on the back. That's probably why my other seam didn't. Oh yeah, I can show it here. It's probably gonna show better. See under my finger how there's that white? If you hold it by the foot, we'll see it really clearly. By the what? The sewing machine foot. Yeah. So it just gets that bulk out of there. Okay, so. Oh, sorry. That's all right. Okay, so now we're gonna press this and then we're gonna... <laughs> How many minutes did I wait? Sorry. Not too many. Oh my gosh. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny now. I'm actually kind of happy because now my points match. <laughs> yeah, we got there. Yeah, my points match now. Look at that point. Good point. But yes, cats, cradles, and square and square blocks are the blocks that have always given me the most trouble. I do not like square and square blocks. I hate them. But now that we have square and square paper, I'm so excited. We're going to add a ton more sizes too because I'm loving it so much that I need more. On the topic of foundation papers, Crafting a Plan Life is asking if the cat's cradle is a block that could be made into foundation paper. I don't know. I have to look into that. It might be too many. I don't know. I need to look into that. That's a good idea. I don't know if it'll work though. But yes, I can look into it. Yeah, thanks for the suggestion. Yes. Okay, from here. Okay, this is going to work now. This is because now the math is going to work. Okay, so this needs to be two by two. And I know that because on my pattern, it says two by two, which is why we always do that. So this little half square triangle should hit the one inch and the one inch. Does that make sense? And this diagonal line should hit. So this should go straight across that seam and this should be in that one inch hole. And see how straight it is now because we added that? It wouldn't have been that straight. Rotate it and then do the two inch And I'm lined up the two, the two, the diagonal. Perfect. So, and you see, it's so much less waste. So again, I'm going to, let's see, have to start with the diagonal. And the one and the one. Two inch. So it does take some math and it does take some figuring out. Make this one, I didn't cut it all the way. Two done. Yay! Yay! They look good too. I'm so excited. Yes. Okay, now we need to do two of these. So to do that, they're so little. Yeah, they're little. Hopefully, I don't mess this up. Let's see, two E's. So I can tell I have a mistake already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whew. Let me look at it again. So white, white, white. Another mistake. White. White, 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 white. So that's why I laid out. Usually I use the design board. I just didn't move it. So I'm going to change. Well, I did already change to the quarter inch foot. I'm going to put these two right sides together. Pin. Actually, since it's so small, I don't need to pin. Oh. Because look, it's there's nothing to pin. <laughs> the, the pin's going to get in the way. So I'm going to chain piece that. Add this. 
Now, if my sizes don't fit exactly, I would have to pin, but they're so small that I feel like if I put a pin, it's gonna distort it. So I'll keep that there, that's chain piece. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one over here. So I am going to press this open. When I'm working with small blocks, no matter what it is, if I'm no, no matter which designer it is, when I am working with small blocks, I tend to press open even if the pattern says not to because you have such little room that this bulk right here is so much more bulky on this three inch. See how far it goes in versus another block? It's just, there's just too much bulk and it makes it nice and flat on a small block. So I kind of will override a pattern if it says not to do that. Mm. Like, you know, because I just feel like mine won't come out. It'll come out too chunky, not flat enough, because there's nowhere for that seam to go, hardly. Mm -hmm. Not chunky. Barbara George said, for those tiny pieces, do you ever use glue? No. I guess you could, instead of pinning. Right. There's a product that somebody told me about one time that helps with small piecing, but I don't, I never tried it. Do you think you could use like the sew line glue pen? Okay. I wouldn't. So from here, I am gonna pin now. I'm gonna cut that apart. There's more to pin. There's more what? There's more to pin now? Yeah, now there's more room to pin. I'm trying, it was like a, the glue I'm thinking of, it's not a glue, but it's, I'll have to look it up. The sew tights? No, okay. it's a, it's an actual water-ish glue that you put oh. on your fabrics. But I've never, I've never, I don't know. I don't want to add something else to my step. Yeah. So I never tried it. I meant to, but I just never did. Kathy Fosnog says, don't be stressed out. This is what happens to us making three inch blocks. Glad you showed us how to troubleshoot. She put a heart. Y'all troubleshoot it because y'all told me what I did wrong. Oh. I don't know if I figured it out or y'all figured it out, but I'm pretty sure it was y'all. I think it like dawned on everyone at the same time. It's like something's not right. Yay. Okay, we're gonna press these and then we'll do the final block. So these blocks are really fun. What I'm thinking I'm gonna do with these, I'm not gonna put them in a quilt. I think I'm gonna turn them into pin cushions. Ooh. So that's what I think I'm gonna do. From Peggy Lipscomb, do you use shorter stitches with the small blocks? Yes. I use like a 1.8. I, in general though, when I tell y'all 1.5, I'm usually stitching a 1.4. When I tell you a 2.0, I'm usually stitching a 1.8. I stitch with tiny stitches. I don't recommend doing that unless you're like super advanced because when I have to pull those seams out, it's tough. It takes and I don't think it's a good advice. I don't think you should follow my advice on that. So these go out. Now, in this block, there's another way you can piece this. Put that there. Put that there. I'm going to show you in a second. And it, to be honest, this is 
probably what I would have done. Hmm. Half square triangle, half square triangle square. And it then you would have had eight pieces there. Half square triangle, half square triangle square. So if you don't want to mess with the cat's cradle, just make four mm. more half square triangles, one more square. I see. Does it make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like here. Yeah, see, seeing the pins on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I do that all the time with designers. If it's easier for me to just do triangle paper. Now, this is prettier because I didn't chop it up. In the end of a big quilt, nobody's going to know. So that's one thing you could do to cheat. Now here I'm going to put these right sides together and pin. I'm going to pin a lot. So here, I'm going to put a pin in this point and a pin in that point. It's hard to see because it's so small. Mm -hmm. And right here, if your stitches start coming loose, that means you have to go a little bit smaller. From Jody Latwison, I look at quilting as a puzzle that was engineered and quilting is a brain teaser puzzle for us to put back together again so we learn by our mistakes. Yeah. So could we look at it? And then KG Mertso says, what causes the ironing mat to discolor like that? Mine does the same thing. I don't know the one at work. We just changed it and it's I think it's because the iron just stays on it and we leave it on much longer because we have it heat up mm. before the videos. Mm -hmm. Now at home, mine does not do that. And I always put a Bella solid or something down and leave it there for a couple of months and then throw that out so I don't have to change the bottom piece. Mm. Okay, so right here, that's a perfect point. Right here, that is not. It's a little mm -hmm. bit off, but I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it. <gasps> We're gonna be so glad this block is done. <laughs> but yeah, so in any, if I was making this at home and had thought about it, I might have changed it to just half square triangles. And I do that all the time. So the stuff that I show you guys where I sew along with other people like Sherry or Corey or Lisa Bonjean, I change the pattern instructions all the time and they don't care. They, you know what I mean? Like they probably could care less what I'm doing. It's just, you know, do it however you want to do it. One more seam. Yay. And then I'm gonna have forgotten because it's taken so long. I'm gonna have forgotten everything Lily told me this morning oh, before we start. The the I'm gonna forget everything that I was supposed to remember. Oh, that's why we have notes. Yes. Let's see, back when we were talking about um, not knowing many people that were in their 90s or close to 100, Stephanie Smith said, the only hundreds I see are temperatures. 101 here in the Texas-Mexican border today, or yesterday. Aww. Oh my goodness, that is hot. It was 90 here yesterday. Everyone in my family that has lived long, they lived 89 and then that's it. Oh. I've never, no one in my family, well, a lot of people in my family died really young, really young. My family so, too. um, yeah, my dad died at 60. My grandmother, she died at like 79. Mm -hmm. One eighty nine. One was like sixty. Mm -hmm. They don't. They don't. They don't live that long. Mm -hmm. But you know, everyone in my family, both sides, they die of the same thing. So I know what I'm dying of. Oh my gosh. I mean, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's definite. It's kind of weird that both both sides have the same issues. Mm -hmm. But okay. Now lots of pins. So on here, I'm gonna try to sew all the way to the pin as close as I can get and then pull it out because it's such a small, it's hard to kind of do on camera without, but I try to get as close as I can before I hit it to pull it out. Oh, I 
looks so good. Oh, there's no mistakes, Lily. <laughs> it, it looks right. It looks it right. It does. Okay, I'm like, uh. Yes. Okay, so we're going to iron this, and I'm going to set this aside. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to grab the sewing machine? Oh, yeah, that'd be good. Thanks. Yeah. Let me keep the pins, though. And then here's the foot. I don't know where you want that. Okay. When I'm working with a block this small, I'm not going to just put the iron in there and just start going. I'm going to flatten it with my fingers first so that I don't create duck pleats in there. Duck pleats are probably the biggest thing that drive me crazy. That's probably my one thing that if there's ever a duck pleat, in, I mean, I'd rather have a mistake in the piecing than a duck pleat. They drive, there's like, I don't know, it drives me crazy. Mm -hmm. We need a graphic that every time you say the word duck pleat, it comes on and it's like, no duck pleat. I know, it's, it's, it's like, um, there's two things that I really care about in, in a house, in a warehouse, in anything, the grout and the blinds. Mm. If, if anyone does grout and blinds without me involved, I'll be mad. Kevin knows. He's like, oh yeah, but I could care less about the carpet. You know, everybody's got their thing. Yeah. Like, I don't care that much about the carpet, but I don't like grout to show and I don't like blinds that are mm. weird. For okay. Me, it's the baseboards. Baseboards? Yeah. Do you want them dark or light? Uh, light, but minimalistic? Yeah. That, like they blend in, but they, they're a nice finish. My house has a lot of areas where like the baseboard does not fully cover the floor and it really bothers me. Like oh. the edge of it. So there's my block. So I'll probably turn it into a pincushion. Now I'll probably do it more I'll do it as a pin cushion but I won't use it as a pin cushion I'll put it in a bowl in my house or something so mm. that is block 26 mm. of socialites designed by Joanna Figueroa I'm going to show you her block one more time mm -hmm. um, to quote Ashley it's so little oh it is little so see hers um hold on I still can't get these cameras right so in the center you can see how she made hers a different color in the center so lots of different looks you could do. I'm gonna move all my stuff off. I'm gonna take a break. Lily is gonna come talk to you guys while I take a short little break and then I'll answer any questions. All right. I'll be right back. Yep. Do, 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 do. Let me go and find my stuff in here. Ooh. Oh, sorry, Lily. You're fine. I'm waiting for me. Um, no, 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 you're good. I'm still setting up my phone. Okay. Okay. Do do do. Do 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 do. Do do do. Hey, hello, everyone. I'm gonna take this off. My name is Lily, as many of you know videographer, voice behind the camera here. Uh, today, I am going to be telling you all about Tutorial Tuesday. It is a cool thing we've been doing on our social media. We are doing that to share videos that if you're new, you may have missed from years past. Um, as Fat Quarter Shop, we have a lot of videos. Uh, it, Fat Quarter Shop has been around for quite a bit on YouTube. So this week for Tutorial Tuesday, the video we are featuring is Jolly Bar Jazz, and I am going to pop up an image of that video tutorial. So make the Jolly Bar Jazz quilt. Uh, this video was before my time, uh, but it is a really cool video, uh, shortcut quilt. It released September of 2017. Uh, so it's kind of like we're throwing it back every Tuesday with some of our favorite fat quarter shop videos. Great stuff. If you have a Jolly Bar, or even if you have a layer cake, you can cut that in half, use it as a Jolly Bar. This pattern is really great for that. Oh, look at Kimberly smiling. She's so cute. So I'm going to take that off of there for a second. I can also answer some questions. I am going to move Kimberly's chair real quick. I made a note for that for myself so I don't forget. Doo, doo, doo. Oh, hit some metal against metal. I'll sit in it for now. I am wearing an, it says Lucy. I know my name's not Lucy, but it's an I Love Lucy t-shirt because I, I love I Love Lucy. It's a thing. And I 
don't see any questions at the moment and Kimberly is back in the room so I will hand it back over to her. Thank you so much for having me in the short intermission. Do -do -do. Okay, so let me know what guys, what questions you have on that. And I am gonna show you the finished quilt with my nine inch blocks. So we did have a super chat from Sally Johnson for $5. Sally says, Queen Elizabeth is 94 and happy Red Friday. I see you're wearing red, Kimberly. Yes, y'all awesome. told me to wear red, I am. <laughs> and then we had a new YouTube member, D and Sigour. Welcome, D. And then question from Stephanie Smith. When you say quarter inch foot, you mean quarter inch foot that has the fabric guide, right? That's what I use. Yes. And there's like some, like I think Bernina has quarter inch feet that some have a guide on the side, some don't. I always use the one with the guide. And from Connie Stanley, how is the gypsy clapper compared to the other one she usually uses? Okay, so I compared them last week. The Gypsy Quilter is heavier but skinnier. To me, they work the same. I've been using both at home. The Riley Blake is much smoother and prettier, but they work the same. Okay, uh, a few people were asking where I went the other week and where I was like, I'm going somewhere. I went to the oh, beach. You did? Yeah, so I didn't talk about that last week because uh, I forgot, but I, do you know where Padre Island National Park is not South Padre Island. I have no idea. Lily. Okay, it's by Corpus Christi. Uh, that's where we went. We camped out. I can show pictures next time since I did not prepare them for today. So you're good to go, Kimberly. So this is the maple leaf layout from Classic and Vintage. Can you show the top camera? Sorry. Yeah. So I can put it away. Yay! So I showed the quilt last week. So these are the nine-inch blocks that I did on camera for socialites. Mm -hmm. I used that maple leaf setting, except I made the border three and a half inches instead of two and a half. And I like it. I think it looks good. Mm -hmm. So what I did for the backing is I made a lot of mistakes on the backing. Oh no. Because, yeah, because I didn't keep myself notes on this. So this is gonna be my binding. For my backing, I took the panel. Well, I bought two panels and because I wasn't sure how much I would need. Ooh. Trimmed it down, and this is my mistake that I don't like. Let's see. You can hear that you can hear it feels like paper, right? I really starched it. Oh. I wish that I this would have been going the other way. But in the, so it's gonna go more at the top of the quilt mm. where the flower goes instead of the bottom. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just took the panel and I just cut away from it and then I just added really big borders so that I would have five inches all the way around the quilt. Now, I could have used the panel. The panel was actually wide enough where I could have just left it on there, but then when Gina quilted it and bound it, it was gonna chop off some of the designs so I decided to add the borders to it. Mm. So it's kind of like two-sided quilt, mm -hmm. depending how like how centered it gets. It could be a two-sided two quilt. Yeah, that's cool. So yeah, I'm excited. I have one more done. Are there any questions though? Uh, not right now. Okay, so I also yesterday, that's what I did yesterday, and I finished this. This was, we did a tutorial on Monday. This is serendipity. It took me one hour to finish it at home. To finish, to make all the other flying geese and everything, so real quick. And this is our serendipity. We have raised $65,754. Thank you so much. And we auctioned off Lori and Ice Quilt and it oh. sold for, sorry, I have to scroll down, $6,800. And I about fell over. That's I don't amazing. know how anybody, um, I was so excited. I almost cried. Yes. Thank you so much to the anonymous winner. Yes. She wants to stay anonymous, but I know who she is. Yes. <laughs> and also want to show 
the blocks that our designers, that our sample makers made. So these are different color options if you want to do serendipity with different colors. This is American Gathering fabric by Lisa Bonjean. And Teresa made these. So this is just showing you how you take anything that we do that's free and you can um, change it a little bit and get a different look. This is Confection Batiques by Kate Spain. These are all Moda or Ruby Star fabrics and they're all in stock right now. This one just came in stock this week. This is pretty. And mm -hmm. Angel made these. Yes. And then Kate made these. This is the What Not Collection by Ruby Star. I feel bad because I'm probably getting them out of order mm -hmm. of how they wanted them. Oh, <laughs> how they had them stacked. Well, because there's nowhere for it to, like, I don't have enough room. And this is, these are little toothbrushes. Oh, that's fun. So that's modern. And then this one is Mill Creek Garden by Jan Paddock. Jan Patek. And um, Carrie made these. I was saying her name wrong, sorry. Jan Paddock. Carrie made these. Carrie made these, yeah. Oh, is sorry. that what I said? I'm not sure. Okay, sorry. That's what I thought I said. Okay. You probably didn't. I just misheard it. <laughs> I love this I'm song. trying to balance the blogs so they don't drop, so Aww. that's what I'm trying to do. Um, and this is the Blooming Bunch fabric by Maureen McCorm McCormick by Nancy. And this is a Bella Solid. It's, a, it's probably color 98. It's really pretty. I love this one. So if you haven't started, it's not too late to start. It's mm -hmm. completely free. We just asked for a donation to make a wish. Mm -hmm. Can I hand you this one over yeah. here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it doesn't fall and then we did release this week our second milestone so in addition to giving you the free quilt the main quilt which is behind me and free blocks free cross stitch we also do different milestones with our quilting so as we raise more and more money we give more and more free patterns so this is this one it is milestone two and we called it happy chance block and this is awesome but mm -hmm. this must have taken the sample maker who made it angel made it no nova sewed it angel designed it mike from mylongarm.com quilted it okay but wait oh my gosh it's huge but look at how perfect those flying geese are wow because she used the flying geese paper go nova i know it's a, it's huge okay so look at it from the front let me look at the size it's 34 by 86 it's a big runner. It's huge. But this would look so good on the end of a bed. Oh, yeah. And like as a bed, like where your dog could sleep. Yeah. Um, Piggy. I can take it home to Piggy. Yeah. <laughs> but this would be a great um, bed, the ending to a bed. And what we try to do with our milestones, because we're trying to raise more and more money, is we try to do like different sizes of stuff so mm -hmm. that you normally wouldn't automatically see so that and this backing is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Super cool. Let's see, the fabric is Boudoir mm -hmm. by Basic Gray. Boudoir. That. I was like, I already know she knows how to say it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's what I have for Serendipity. So thank you to everyone who has donated. And thank you so much to the person who won the Best Friends quilt. Yes. So excited. Okay, I wanted to show you again, this book is going to print, actually it went to print Monday. So this is our Among the Stars design. And in this quilt, we have two colorways. One is a Layla Boutique fabric, and one is a fig tree fabric. So there's this fabric, and then there's this version. We give you both. I wanna show you the quilts because our sample makers probably want them back. But we will show you the book when it does come in stock. This is the Christmas version. I'm going to hold it because it's too big. It's very heavy. It's huge. 
Teresa made this. Gina from Thread Graffiti made it. Quilted it. Okay, so there's the top. And the, this is actually a very beginner friendly quilt, even though it looks hard, because you can use triangle paper, and we list the triangle paper you can use in the book. And these are very big pieces. So if you're wanting to make something that's big, that gives you like a lot of pop. That border is amazing. Mm -hmm. So this is the Christmas morning fabric. We do have block of the months available. I'm not sure if they're sold out or not. Um, I didn't look that up. There's that one. And the next one uses fig trees, pumpkins and blossoms fabric. Oh, I love this one. I love the other one too. They're both so pretty. But the border is amazing. Yeah. So I just wanted to show that to you since when it comes, when the book comes in, we have them printed in America, so they don't take too, too long. Mm -hmm. Once they're printed and they arrive, if you pre-order the book, it will ship out and then the block of the month ship with the fabrics. Mm -hmm. So let me know if there's any questions on that. From Grace Gilliat, not a socialites question, but would love to see your dinosaur blocks. I'm working on dinos too. Okay, uh, can, if somebody emails me, I'll bring them next mm -hmm. week. I have only made the plant blocks. Okay. But since you asked, I'll make a dinosaur. Yay. That'll get me going. So on Monday this week, Corey Yoder announced her fabric requirements for the Spring Brook Blossoms Block of the Month. So if you go to Corey Yoder's blog, just type Coriander Quilts or Corey Yoder blog, there's a whole blog post with everything. I'm going to sew along with her. And I got all my fabric, so I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. This is going to be my outer border, 29110-14. Now, she announced this after fabric had already arrived in stores, so a lot of the yardage is sold out, but not all of it. This is going to be my backing, which is, let's see, 29115-31. This is what I'm gonna use for the stems, which is what she calls for. I'm just gonna use the same one. Let's see, this yellow is my binding, 291116, 14. So this is kind of what I'm thinking. This is the border, the binding, and my backing. So she has blue, and I decided to go with yellow since I have a lot of yellow in my kitchen. I can put this on the back of a couch that faces the kitchen. For the white, this background fabric sold out right away. So I'm using the same background that I used in Socialites with the Homestead collection. And I also just used it in a Christmas morning block set that I'm gonna show you coming up in a couple of weeks. So this is 20708-36, but it's a wonderful white on white. So that's what I'm gonna use for the background. Now this pattern, this buttercups pattern, I love it and have been wanting to make it. So I'm going to make this quilt and all the yellows and gre greens that are left over try to make this out of the scraps. There are 12 blocks and she has on her blog the dates that everything will be coming out. And so for the fabric requirements, this is like your stems, your backgrounds, your borders, binding, backing, that kind of stuff. This is for the blocks. So she's saying you can use a 10 inch square for these colors and an eighth of a yard or a fat eighth for these colors. Well, I already had, I starched all this already. I already had a layer cake that was open. Oh. So instead of buying a whole thing, I went ahead and took the layer cake that, um, that I had open and I combined it with another layer cake that I bought. So this doesn't have every single print because I think you would need two layer cakes because on these you might need, you're gonna need more than a 10 inch square. So that's what I'm hoping to use. Now, if I run out of fabric, I can just switch around. It doesn't, I don't have to keep it exactly matchy matchy. 
And so it looks like um, it's gonna be divided out. And the way that it looks to me is the bottoms all look the same. The centers all look the same. Sorry, the centers all look different. And the outside of the flower is the same. So it looks like you're gonna make each center twice in two different fabrics. But when I get that first block, you could probably make all your stems and all your outsides and then just wait for the insides to come to finish. So I just wanted to show that because I'm gonna be sewing along. I'll bring my blocks. It's completely free. It's gonna be 12 blocks. And so in my planner, what I do is I write down like each block and then I can check it off as I make the block because one of the things that really is going on in my life right now is I have so much going on. It's really hard for me to keep up with my thoughts, much less what I'm doing. So by doing this, when I come back, I just pull this out and I'm like, oh, I already did that, I already did that. I'm not recreating something that I've already done because a lot of times I will forget where I'm at in a project because sometimes I'll work on it for eight hours and finish half, but then I come back another month later or two months later and I can't remember where I'm at. So this kind of keeps me on track a little bit. And it tells me what I started with, you know. So hopefully the two 10 inch, Two layer cakes will work. Mm -hmm. I think it will. I have all my fabric. Let me know if you have any questions on that. I just hope it's, I hope that you guys sew along with her. She's got a Facebook group. I know a lot of people have joined her Facebook group because of this, but it's great when designers give free sew alongs. I always love to sew along with them. I'm using her fabric, but you can use any fabric. You can use her old fabric. The one that would look so good is, um, she had one called Pepper and Flax. Is that right? Yes. And that would look so good. If I had some of that left over, I would use that. Mm. So this is something hopefully you can, you know, you'd probably need to buy borders, background binding, all that. But I mean, if you just wanted to make the blocks, you probably have enough fabric at your house. Mm -hmm. right. uh, questions earlier from Val Earl. Will, will there be demos with the stars quilt? The Among the Stars quilts? No, but this is so easy. Mm -hmm. So easy. It's so beginner. And it uses one size of triangle paper, H200, and it's so easy. Mm -hmm. Faye Dixon says, does the book come with the block of the month for Among the Stars again? I don't remember. You'll have to look I online. Just... I didn't look any of that up before we started. We'll look real quick. It's probably sold out. Oh, no. There. Yeah, it's not sold out. Scroll down. It ships with the first month. Yes, so the book, the block of the month includes the book and it will ship in month one and both of them. Mm -hmm. And we do it different on, you know, block of the months. It just kind of depends on different things while we do different things. Yes. Okay. And a comment from Jean Feeling Brown. Please consider printing more of your books with the spiral binding like the American Gatherings one. So much easier to use. Thank you. Okay. So this week we started our Jolly Bar three quilt along. We're doing a table runner. So all you need to make this is your book, which is right here. It's a very low price book. It's only $9.95. And at the end, you're gonna have a table runner. And this is what your table runner will look like right here. Now we mocked it up in solids just so you can visualize. And all the fabric requirements and dates are on this sheet of paper that you can find at our blog, which is the Jolly Jabber. Mm -hmm. I am using the, let's see, what fabric am I using? Sunday Stroll. Yes. And I found that when I made this, because I've already made all the blogs, is using this perfect tin ruler really helped because it's not too big and it works great with a Jolly Bar. So this is my block one. Now in this, we write it to where um, you don't use triangle paper, but if you wanted to, you could use H450 would work. Mm, okay. Which um, you would know because five by five is unfinished. Finished, you take half an inch off. That would be four and a half by four and a half. So that's four and a half paper. Okay. And let's see, what I did that's a little bit different than the pattern 
the pattern has you make everything pressed open. But on a block this big, I don't really want to press open because it's big. So I laid it out on a big, big design board and then I just pressed these opposite ways so that I didn't have to press open. And then I just assembled everything where I could just press different ways. Like I assembled this to this to this to this, so then I just pressed opposite ways. So that's what I mean about taking a pattern. You can use triangle paper. You can, you can do all kinds of different things to make it your own. But yeah, I didn't want to press this open. It would have taken too much time and it's so big, it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. But for all the seams to work, it's hard to write a pattern where, oh, this goes this way, this goes this way, move them around. You know, you can't really write the pattern that way. Okay. So that's what I did on mine. And I did use the background that is in the Sunday Stroll collection. Mm -hmm. And the next block will be April 12th, which is next week. Mm -hmm. And I've loved seeing everybody, everything everybody's working on. So that's another thing that I worked on for this week. The next item that I worked on is Reach for the Stars block by Riley Blake Designs. So this is the RBD block challenge. They're releasing um, three blocks a month on the first three Tuesdays of each month. So we're on block seven. This is called Reach for the Stars. It's designed by Melanie Collette of Hello Melly and Hello Melly Designs, and I'm just using four prints from the Prim collection, so I'm using one, two, three, four. And I am using my Sashiko machine to add the Sashiko stitch, and I got that idea from Flamingo Toes, Bev McCullough. Mm, let me zoom in on that. Yeah, and I really, I maybe I should have used a darker thread, but I am don't really sew that, um, straight on that sashiko machine so it also does show up better in person i think yeah it does yeah you can really see it it's diff i think the reason it doesn't show on camera is because it's got to shine mm -hmm. so so there's that and then there's more there's more okay so this is my tease right there this is a tease. This is our five year anniversary for the Sew Sampler box. And I'm so excited to say that our wait list is finally gone. So if you wanna sign up, now's the time because it will sell out again. Yay! If you want the May box, which is our, if you want the April box, which is our fifth anniversary box, which has lots of coupons, sign up by April 12th. So today's April 9th, so you've got a couple of days. Mm -hmm. And on this, whenever we have a new year, it always restarts in April, we have a new sew along. So this sew along is called Always Look at the Bright Side of Life. It's designed by Sherry McConnell. And we came up with this little binder that we have an Amazon link to. If you get it, you can print this for free. And inside you can put little, I can't, let's see. Yeah, I can't. Hold on. Let me take this off. I yeah, don't want y'all to see it. Page protectors. And we linked to the page protectors also. And all of your little cards you get go in there. And I am making this. We are going to have quilt kits. We have not put them online yet. They're going to go online when we put... When we put um, all of the sew sampler items online, which is around the 20th of the month. But this is a sneak peek. Please get on the wait list because we get so many complaints when we sell out. So not on the wait list. Sign up because no more wait lists. Yeah, get get sign up now so that you don't have to be on a wait list later. Is what I mean. Yes, and um, I'm excited about having everything in here now with mine. I'm going to show you each month. I'm going to start showing these blocks in the so in the live stream, and. We're gonna show the blocks that are made with the kit that Teresa made. And then I'm gonna show my blocks that I made and I'm gonna make my blocks with Christmas Morning by Layla Boutique and I've actually made all 12 of them. So we're gonna start incorporating more so sampler in the live streams by showing the blocks. 
Now, the blocks, we do sell separately later, so you could always get them. But I'm gonna start showing that so that I can show you what we present in our box versus what you can do at home so that it can help you kind of step outside the box. And if you get something in your box that you don't love, you can change it. You can mix one item from one box with another box. There's all kinds of things you can do with your box. And so I'm gonna kind of help you just look at the blocks in a different way. Mm -hmm. I did have one question earlier uh -huh. about uh, the Sashiko machine. Uh-huh. Um, or Sashiko? I, forget I don't how know you how you say it. it. It's one of those. Uh, first of all, what is a Sashiko machine? Okay, so Baby Lock came out. I call it Sashiko, but I don't know which one is right. Somebody actually told me which one was right, and I can't remember. Yeah. They came out with this machine, I don't know, maybe five or six years ago, and Corey Yoder got it, and she did a lot of her samples with it, and I loved it at Quilt Market, and I was like, I've got to get me one of these machines. It's made by Baby Lock. I bought mine. I, nobody gave it to me for free, so they're not paying me to say this. Um, now they have a Baby Lock 2 machine. Now, I don't know what the difference is. I have the first one. And what it does is it is, it's a very finicky machine, but it has one thread from the bottom. And let me kind of show the stitch. If you can zoom in, sorry. Yeah. It's hard to tell, but the machine does this stitch right here. It's like supposed to mimic a hand stitch, right? Yes, and you can set the length of this stitch and the length between the stitches. And so on the front, you get this, which is like a hand look, and on the back, you get a mess. So on the back, you get a full stitch all the way across. And so it's, um, you could, a lot of people will finish like table runners on it or pillows, and it just gives this beautiful stitch. Now, I just decided to add it to my blocks because Bev McCullough was, and I thought it looked good, and I emailed her and said, hey, if I do the same thing, are you gonna be offended? And she said no, so. Oh, it looks really cute. Yeah, it's just a finic the machine is pretty finicky, but I do like when I use it because it was pretty expensive. So mm -hmm. I do need to use it more. And it doesn't have like a bobbin, right? Yes, it does. So it only works from a bobbin. So at the top of your machine, there's no thread. It's all it's comes from the bottom, right here, right? but you have to wind it on the top. And I've also heard that with that machine that you should always wind it with that machine, not another machine because of the tension. But now that, I mean, it's finicky, but now that I have it down, I can do, I mean, it's not finicky anymore. It's just took me a long time to learn, but that's also because I'm stubborn and I bought the machine and I didn't want to go to a class. You know me, I didn't want to do all that. I don't have time. So if I would have taken the time to go to a class where I bought it, I think I would have done better. And then Crafting a Plan Life was asking, what would you do if you don't have a Sashiko machine? Sashiko, sorry, I think it's Sashiko. Oh, I wouldn't do it. I just, I wouldn't sit and hand stitch that. I but would if, just, if you wanted that without the machine, that's what oh, you Oh, then do, you would right? buy. Okay, so there's some books out there. There's some Sashiko books. I would get a book and read about it, but there are Sashiko needles and there's Sashiko thread. And I would get a book and um, there's a lot of books out there right now. I think we have some of them. Mm -hmm. Because it's becoming more popular, I guess it's like, it's something that developed in Japan and it's becoming more popular now. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely get a book and read about it. But you definitely need the Sashiko needle, which is thicker and longer mm -hmm. so that you can, cause you kind of create a couple of stitches at one time. Mm -hmm. It's m more of a, running stitch rather than a pull up, pull down, pull up, pull down. And questions about Sew Sampler from Stephanie Smith. Yeah, to everything starting with Sew Sampler. Should a Sew Sampler box subscriber go ahead and order the binder or wait until we receive our box? If you're gonna sew the blocks, I would buy the binder and the plastic paper, tell me the name. Sheet protectors. That are that size. Page protectors, sheet Page protectors. Pro yes, whatever that is. Yes. Because it keeps it really nice and you actually can see the front of the pattern and the back. So when I sewed this, you can sew from this and never have to take it out and never lose a pattern. Because mm. we have been, people ask for those binders, but I mean, we're not really in the business of selling paper products. So we can do it, but we just, we have to sell it for such a high price that, you know, is it really worth it? Because mm -hmm. we don't buy, you know, if you're not in that business, you don't really have the volume to do it. 
And from Lorena Wammer, if you decide to make the sew sampler blocks without the kit, will there be fabric requirements listed somewhere? I think so. We have them somewhere, so we can put them somewhere if we don't. Okay. I wanted to let you know we did a fun blog post this week that I just kind of wanted to talk about. We're doing a contest, so if you're like one of those people who like to enter contest, and we picked some spring quilt patterns and spring cross stitch patterns, and so we're just featuring them. This is the Garden Sampler Block of the Month book that we published for Sherry Falls of This and That, and this is one of my favorite quilts. It's awesome. So um, this is very springy. This is our strawberry picking pattern. And I am using this actually to finish my sew sampler that I just showed you. So not only in the month 12 or April 2022, you'll get your finishing pattern. No, March 2022, you'll get your finishing pattern. But I'm gonna finish mine in this pattern so I can show you Maybe you don't like the pattern at the end. Well, then we have another pattern you can put it in. This is Ombre Flutter by V & Co. This is one of my favorites that I've never made. I love this pattern. It's called Scrappy Sunflowers. I want to make this. So pretty. This is a PDF pattern called Bloom from Cluck Cluck Sew. And then we wanted to feature this Quilter's Patch by Aditta. Now this book, when it's out of print, we're not gonna reprint it. So we're getting down to the, probably at, by the end of the year, we'll probably sell out of that. Wow. But this one, we get so many questions on. So this yes. is why I really wanted to show this. So this is a pillow. Lori and I made these together. I actually sewed the blocks and then she turned it into a pillow. Oh. And she has a matching one. So is that the original Best Friends project? In yeah, way? it is. <laughs> it is. So she came out with this pattern. Oops. Farm Girl Vintage Flower Quilt and Pillow. This is a PDF, and this PDF includes all the flowers. If you want to make the stems, you buy this book, which most people have, the Farm Girl Vintage book, and you make the crops block, which is down here. So that's very springy and we get so many questions on this that now we have a video where we can refer to the pattern that's a PDF and the book. So you need both to make this, but it's fun and it uses a lot of scraps. This is just an old 1930s collection from five or six years ago. And then I'm gonna end with new items. So, we have a lot of new stuff. Okay, these I'm excited about because I just got to see them for the first time today. So Lori came out with readers. So they're called Stitchy Readers. And there's three different magnifications. So the blue one is 2.5, the green one is 2.0, and the red is the 1.5. And they're labeled on our website, but they're also labeled on here. So I would need the 2.5 and they're also labeled on the front so you can use these. Ooh, I can see better. What? <laughs> I can see really good. I can see that much better. Oh my gosh. Yes. I need to get new glasses. So I'm excited about these because I can use these when I cross stitch in my car. Or wear these for live stream. Yes. <laughs> They're so cute. So I'm going to pull them all out, actually. And they're actually a really good price. And this is actually pretty cool because it's one of those, well, I don't know what you call it, but it. Oh, yeah. It like snaps. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to take all this plastic stuff off yeah. so we can make it look good. They're so cute. You guys are going to have to comment below which color is your favorite. I know. And she is going to make a 3.0 because I asked her to. Excellent. Because I'm blind as a bat. Mm, These see, are my favorite color though. Right I was going to say, I thought the yellow was my favorite. And now you take out the red and I think the red's my favorite. It's awesome. They're all cute. They're all cute. And then she new buttons came in this week. 
cute little buttons. Yep. So those are new. I'm going to put these over here where I don't break them. And this is so awesome. This is on flash sale today. Prim Star Runner. And anytime we put something Lori's on flash sale, it usually sells out. So I just wanted to show it to you. Mm -hmm. So that's on flash sale. You do need the book. And this came in, and we did an unboxing of this on our Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube channel yes. this Wednesday. So if you want to see it all unboxed live, check that out. But it is a light box for when you make her applique. So it comes packaged much nicer than this, but we already opened it on Wednesdays. And it has this little plug. I'm going to show you how you do it, how you turn it on and how bright it is. Mm -hmm. I have it in here upside down. And the reason I have it in here upside down is because my power is on this side, not that side. Yes. So it's on purpose. And these are inch marks, which is great. And I'm going to show you how bright it gets. It's one level of brightness. And you turn it on with this little clip, this little clicker. Okay. Oh, I unplugged it. Oh, I was like, what happened? There it is. Yeah. No, I unplugged it because this thing is, it's a short. So I love it. I'm going to, I'm going to take it home and try it. Can you put some like foundation paper over it? Sure. Like a sheet of it? Mm-hmm. Let me put some fabric or, uh-huh. Here, let me pull this out. I mean, I do have fabric everywhere. So this would be like, oh. You can't even see it. <laughs> it's oh so my. bright. Okay, hold on. Uh, Let's see. There, okay. So there's like fabric, and then if you were going to trace it, this is your paper. Mm -hmm. ah, so that's the best I can. But yes, it's bright enough to go through all the layers. And so if you were going to applique and you were going to draw your lines, you could do that here. Mm -hmm. You could also just set this in your lap on top of a desk like a lap desk so that it doesn't break and then um, just have light coming up. So very bright. I mean, this is this is a cardstock paper too. This is not a thin paper. Mm -hmm. And the light box itself isn't heavy. I was surprised when I lifted it to move it around. Like it's a good weight. Yes, it's nice and thin, mm -hmm. which is what I think everybody wants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna Put this to the side so I don't. I'm gonna actually hand this to you, Lily, so okay, I don't break yeah. it. And then just don't forget to get the cord down there. Yeah. I just can't unplug it right now. Yeah, you're good. This is a new kit from Vanessa from VN Co. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to show it because Moda puts all their kits in this really yeah. beautiful blah, blah, blah box. And so it has the pattern. It has this uh, ruler which helps you create your ombre look and then all your fabric. And it comes nice and packaged in this. It's already divided by color and everything. And her fabric sells so good. And this is new. This is a pattern that we've had, and what we're trying to do is take some of our older patterns and repurpose them. So this is a pattern that we have a video on. Mm -hmm. It's a free video, and we paired this up with Happy Days fabric by Sherry and Chelsea, which is actually the fabric that we're showing in the box. No, maybe not. Scratch that. Kate made this, and Gina quilted it. So this is a free pattern, and we have this kit now. And we package our kits. So cute. Also, this is the same pattern you got your setting from. Well, you got it from the full size pattern. Yeah, I was like, I'm missing something. Yes, my maple leaves. Yes. Yes, so I use the paid pattern. Mm -hmm. Yes. For your socialite setting. Yes, to put it in here. And then I'm excited. Okay, let me answer any questions before I announce this little thing that I'm going to do. Okay. A few questions about the light box from Crafting a Plan Life. Does the light box have a self-healing cutting surface? No. Absolutely not. Yeah, it's, it's a light. It's a, yeah. 
just the light. And from Man on Bergy Boo, is there a different intensity for the light? No. Same one intensity. one um, bright and not bright. One bright. Bright and off. <laughs> on and off, yes. It's all you need. On and off. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay, so I got this book in stock last week, and I took one home, and I love it. It's called Sampler Spree. Now, I want to be totally clear about it. It is where it gives you cutting, but no individual instructions per block. So you have to have, you know, some experience. You've got to be intermediate to advanced to be able to interpret the book. It's by Susan Aki, and she's going to have a sew along and we're going to announce she's going to announce her sew along dates it's going to be over the summer and she's going to divide it by color so like all the oranges one day all the reds one day mm -hmm. she does have it um it's going to be a pretty intense sew along because of all the blocks the book has i'm gonna i want to tell you the exact number I think I know the number, but I don't want to say it. The book has 106 blocks. Ooh. Now, this layout wow. is 100 blocks. Uh -huh. So, because I read the whole book. So, what you do is if there's six blocks you don't love or six blocks you don't want to make, you just don't make those because you only need 100. Or, like me, I'm going to make all 106 and put six on the back. So, and it's a pretty awesome setting. I have not decided what fabric I'm going to use, so I would love for you guys to comment and tell me what fabric I should use. Ooh. I might use scraps. I might buy something. I really don't know because I was kind of looking through my scraps, and I don't have enough of one designer to do this, I don't think. So I, I'm kind of stuck on what I'm going to do or whose fabric I'm going to use. But I will say this so along because there's so many blocks each week, it's going to be hard for me to keep up with. So I might get behind on it, but that's okay. I'm going to finish it. Mm -hmm. But I love this. I love that it's samplerish. I'm going to show you one block. So this is how it's written. Sorry. It has the diagram and it has the cutting. So you have to figure out how to piece it. Oh. So you have to figure out that the G goes here and the H goes here and it's a corner square. Okay. So it, this is not step by step, which is why I'm saying if you definitely have experience, if you're going to sew along with us, mm -hmm. don't be a 100% beginner. Now, of course, okay. each week I will keep notes like I always do and tell you I use this triangle paper or I use this square and a square or this flying geese paper. I will keep notes. I'll probably just write the notes in my book. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but I love the design. I would just say, I just, um, I want you to sew along with me. I just want you to be experienced enough to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. But, and I wanted to give you a heads up. Now she's going to let us borrow this quilt to show you on screen so that you can really see the look of it. So you can kind of, and I think once I get the quilt, I'll be able to kind of visualize what I want to do. But if I'm going to jump into a project that has 106 blocks, it has to be the right collection. Mm -hmm. Um, I just, that's a, and it's kind of one of those things where it would be so cool if you just used 106 fabrics, like one fabric every block and then one background. Ooh. But I just don't, I don't know. I don't know if I have, I mean, 106 fabrics, I don't know that I could do that. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to do like a two color, mm -hmm. just two colors. That's it. That's or mm -hmm. mixed design. I don't know what I'm going to do. Ooh. All right. People are suggesting batiks. Sanctuary, no. No, no. <laughs> sanctuary fabric, cozy up fabric, anything Lori, anything fig tree. Uh, well, I'm, I, was, I wanted to use Stitch by Lori, but it depends on if I get the sample fabric in time. Mm. So I've already reached out to Riley Blake, um, but it's going to be a month and I need it. So I'm not sure it's going to come in time. Mm -hmm. And what size are the blocks? Six inches. Let me look again to make sure. Hold on. I'm pretty sure they are, but... Six. So six and a half unfinished, six inch finished. Mm -hmm. And so there's 106 blocks, one size, just cutting. Mm -hmm. All right. And then we had a super chat from Janice Babin for $20. And Janice says, you are the quilting wonder woman, Kimberly. Oh, thank you. I could fly. <laughs> just like Piggy. 
Oh, oh yeah, I can fly. I, you know what I wish I had? I wish I had, like, I wish when I was a little kid, you know how, like, when you're little, you think, oh, this is going to happen when you're an adult. I used to think there's going to be, like, flying cars and you won't have to drive yourself to work. And every day I drive, I mean, I drive, it takes me so long to get to work. I'm like, I wish I had a flying car. Yeah. Or I could just show up somewhere. That would be cool. Or, like, teleportation. Like, yes. Would love it. Same. Yes. All right. Um, Deborah Henderson earlier asked if I found sand dollars while I was at the beach. I unfortunately did not. And I will tell you guys more beach stories next week. Did you look at it? Did you I, look for them? I did. Yeah. We, we looked for shells and sand dollars, but there's, it was a whole adventure though. So things happened and got in the way of that. Oh, well, I went one time and I literally, that beach, whatever that South Padre, when yes. I was in like sixth grade, maybe I was in seventh grade, I slept on the beach for real. Mm-hmm. Like my friend's dad had a van and he um so he slept in the van we slept on the beach there was no hotel room i mean and then we just went back home like we literally slept on the beach there was no hotel there's no nothing wow because yeah that's what we did we camped on the beach yeah i I, nowadays i would never do that (laughs) i would be too scared i would get killed or I, the, the jerk, the jer- I mean, I would be scared. Like, oh, I would never, s- oh no. One time my sister-in-law, she was at the house and it was right after she got a divorce. And so she was like oh. looking for people to like go on trips with her. And she was like, we could all go with my kids and your kids and we can go camping. And I was like, I'm out. I'm not going. You can take your brother. I'm not going. But I, I told her, I was like, no chance I'm going. And I was like, and you're going to watch all four of these kids? You're crazy. <laughs> There's no way you can keep up with them. So hmm. she she didn't ever do it. But I mean Kevin would have gone with her, but mm-hmm. I was like, I have to be honest, I'm out. I'm not yeah. I'm not going. That's good to be honest, yeah. <laughs> All right, and last question here from Helen Mercus. Is quilters patch a good pattern for beginner slash intermediate quilter? I would say intermediate to advanced. I would okay. say that was one of the hardest quilts I ever made. I made every block in that quilt book for the photography. Oh, yeah. And I could not bring myself to finish it, so I sold the blocks on eBay. Oh, that's the one. I Because okay. I wasn't going to throw it away, but I just could not. I was like, there's no way I'm going to finish this. Okay. That was a Digis at Tars, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Wow. So, guys, have a great weekend. Oh, I have something to show you. Where is it? Oh. This is my life. Okay, so... Look, this is, Emma, this is tomorrow. Oh, okay. I was like, what? It's on in my notes. Oh, no. Okay, so I just printed this. This is all her dances that are highlighted. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. She's in nine dances over two days, and this is what time I need to be there at every dance. So tomorrow morning, I'm going to wake up at the crack of dawn. But I'm excited. I love to do, I love to do her dance stuff, but... I always take these with me when I get to these dance conventions, but this doesn't say like what number the dance is. So I need to research that so I can tell Kevin when to turn on, but um, between 10, no, 11 a.m. and 1240, she's in eight dances. How she's gonna do that, I don't know, but I'm gonna be hiding so she, if she, so she can't find me if she needs something. Oh. I mean, not really, but. I don't know how she does it, but that's my life tomorrow and actually Sunday. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that'll be fun. I just thought it'd be kind of fun. I just printed it. I literally printed it right before I came upstairs, and I thought, oh, I could show it. <laughs> but the reason I print it is I take it with me. Mm-hmm. So I also kind of know, like, how many dances in between. But this isn't just our studio, I don't think. I think they're combining other studios in, which kind of nervous about that. But... Mm. I email like my mom and my husband, Kevin, what the number is, but there's no number on here. Oh. So he gets frustrated because when they do the dances, they just say number 132. Mm-hmm. He doesn't know the song. Mm. So then he's like, I don't know if she's in that dance. And it's so hard. I mean, there's like, look at, okay, let me see <clears throat> one of these. Look how many people are in this dance. Like this dance. It's all these kids. How are you going to find her on the screen if you don't even know if that's the right dance? So my homework today is to take this, try to figure, I don't even know what the name of the competition is. <laughs> Go find it and try to write the number so that I can tell Kevin. Because what I do is we have a family group chat. My kids don't have, only Emma has a phone. My boys don't have phones. Um, but I do, they have iPads. 
And so I'll text them, okay, turn on, she's next, she's next, she's next. But then if the live stream is behind, then they're so confused. And then I just give up. So sense. I've got to figure out, that's my homework for today is to research what number each dance is so that um, I don't have to text them a million times. Yeah. Well, good luck to Emma. That sounds like so much fun. I know. It's, it's downtown, which makes me nervous. But it's mm -hmm. at the Hilton on 4th and Red River, something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's um, it's on like the sixth floor. It's really clean. We went there like two weeks ago, and there's a Starbucks <laughs> yes. right there. So I, I'm excited about the Starbucks. Um, but it is pretty far from her house, so if she forgets anything in her in her bag, she's in trouble. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, guys, have a great weekend. Bye, everyone.